You were born with individual strengths and a unique purpose. Don't let fears, false beliefs, or life's happenings diminish your influence. It's time to live and lead for impact. Host Kirsten Ross, expert of transformation, will help you defeat the drama and overcome the trauma that can stop you in your tracks. You'll gain focus, find confidence, and take bold action. Unleash passionate, purposeful you. Let's go. Welcome to the Live and Lead for Impact podcast. I'm Kirsten Ross, your host, and this is episode number 145. I am so glad that you're with me today. I have an amazing guest that I have been looking forward to interviewing for a while. Her name is Ruchi Singh, and she owns her life and helps others to own theirs. She says violence changes something deep within us. But we have the power to decide what that change will be. Ruchi made a choice to take complete ownership and responsibility for her life. She gave a voice to herself, and by doing so, she has given a voice to countless others. She started giving talks to create awareness about domestic violence combined with the messages that we humans have resounding power within us to transform and recreate our life. She is an inspirational speaker, mindset coach, and a content creator. Currently, through her story, videos, and coaching, she has empowered people from the UK, India, Australia, Singapore, the USA, South Africa, Canada, and still counting. She is absolutely a woman working to make a great impact. And so welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah. And I tell you, it's just reading your bio is so inspiring. I mean, the energy is popping out. Um, So tell me what, I mean, I have an inkling here, but what life experiences have motivated you to make this impact? Um, all right, so let me share my story. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, Kirsten, you know, our life is actually made up of millions of moments, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But then comes a moment which decides the rest of our life. And I had such a moment, you know, when, one day when my ex husband came home drunk and he decided that all right, today he would like to kill me. Mm. And he he went to the kitchen and he got a butcher's knife and um, he put it to my throat. And, uh, Mm. and, you know, it is very difficult. Actually, it is very difficult to articulate what you go through when you're almost facing a certain death. Even now, there are things which suddenly pop up and I remember about that day, which I hadn't, uh, you know, thought of. So I had two thoughts at that time. One was, I have to be absolutely still so that I don't aggravate him further. And the second one was that I will never see my family again back in India Mm. because this happened in Sydney, Australia. Luckily, he changed his mind. Instead of stabbing me, I had this red exercise ball. You know, the big ones? Yeah. Yes. Um, So I was just standing next to it, actually, because I'd run somewhere in the house to... I mean, I had nowhere to run. So Mm. I just went and stood there. And he just stabbed my red exercise ball. And... um, And... um, In the process, like he cut his hand and all that. And uh, that was like a lucky break for me, I guess. Uh, Mm. Maybe he just changed his mind so I could get out of the apartment. Yeah. Yes. And um, so so what happened after that? Yes. So, of course, this was not like it happened suddenly. Like uh, you always have clues and they are earlier incidences but till now I he had never threatened me with like a knife or something so I was in absolute shock had he been verbally abusive or other kinds of abuse but not just not physical 
See, it was sometimes physical, but uh, he had never put a knife to my throat. Okay. Verbal abuse, of course. Uh, and that was like uh, like a part of my life. I actually started believing I was worthless mm -hmm. and good for nothing and all that. But um, but this this you know shook me up. And uh, a good thing about facing death is if I have to find something good is it just cuts through the clutter in your mind mm -hmm. and you get absolute clarity. Mm -hmm. So I had these emotions, all these churning emotions, but there was one emotion that was anger. I was absolutely furious with myself. Uh, yeah. I, you know, in Australia, if something like this happens, it makes it to national news. And I was like, no, I... I like I asked myself this question. I actually asked myself this question. I said, Ruchi, have you taken birth to become a statistic? And my answer was no. I refuse to be just a statistic. Mm -hmm. And this helped me to, you know, take a step, get out of it, finally cut the shackles, which I think I had also put myself into. And uh, then there was another thing, you know, I kept asking myself because I thought that night that, OK, this is it. I'm going to die. So for me, this was a second birth. And mm -hmm. I started thinking, what if I had actually died that night? What mm -hmm. would happen? The value of my life. Mm -hmm. Right. I would have been just another news item. And the only way we add value is when we add value to other people's life. And this question actually saved my life. And um, yes, and uh, let me share this with you that this was not like a instant thing. Like I thought about it tonight and next day I was talking about it. No, it took me time. It was gradual because mm -hmm. it was a huge change mm -hmm. to come to terms with. But from that night onwards, this thought never left me. Mm. Like I, I have to make my life count. I love that. Yeah. Otherwise, what is the value if you haven't made a difference? And so what's the difference that you're going to make? I want to share uh, that I was in an abusive relationship. So I totally um, get what you're saying that, it, um, well, one, for me, I know when it was, emotional verbal abuse yes it's yes. hard in and your mind to like at what point where is the tipping point from he's angry he's yelling and abuse and it's just not as clear it's not as black and white when it's physical there's there's marks and it, I think it beca can become a little more concrete but yeah it's such a people I I know Sometimes people don't understand why you don't leave immediately. Yes. But there is so much involved. It's a huge transition and your self-esteem is so torn up. And, and who are you having to rely on to make these decisions? You. You're evaluating yes. the situation when they've maybe told you you're a drama queen or making a big deal out of nothing or I'm just kidding or all those kinds of things that make you question. And then it's yep. hard to do a reality check, right? But it's such a big decision. So you need to be certain and then you need to take steps. Yes. Yes. And since you have gone through it, you'll understand that it doesn't, uh, at least for most of the cases, it doesn't happen that one fine day it starts and it keeps happening. Most of the time there's a pattern. There'll be something which is slightly violent. And then there's a huge remorse from the person mm -hmm. who's abusing. And like they'll cry, they'll promise you the world, they'll say, I'll mm -hmm. go for therapy, everything. And you want to believe that because, you know, our life is mostly run by fear and hope. So you fear the change and you mm -hmm. have this desperate hope that somehow magic will happen and things will change. Mm -hmm. and well, and a person the, who loves you wouldn't be doing that, right? We, we, we apply the, yes. the normal kinds of relationship, I don't know, definitions, protocols, <laughs> norms to a, a relationship that isn't any of those things. 
Yes, you're absolutely yeah. right. It's just that the the psychological damage it does to you that you actually start believing that maybe it is me. Like I started questioning after a while, is it me? Because mm-hmm. he kept saying that it is you. Because of you, I behave like this. And I started mm-hmm. questioning myself, is it me? Am I doing something? If I get more loving, more adjusting. Uh-huh. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it is a whole lot of confusion and mess yeah yeah so I'm sorry so you yes you were talking about how it took you a while after that point to get to get everything ready to get solid in your mind so what process did you go through all right so uh one thing um which worked for me in fact throughout I have been doing meditation for for more than a decade serious like i have it's been a part of my daily routine for more than a decade but i've grown up in a household where meditation was just part of the life like my mom does meditation my grandfather my maternal grandfather he used to do meditation and all um uh, there's this thing called pranayama which is actually conscious breathing so uh uh for me I was kind of isolated in Sydney. I did not have my own friends. All my friends were his friends. And since uh, I was not working, I could not uh, make my own friends. When you go to work, you meet new people. And uh, there was this deep sense of shame that this is happening to me. So I could not share. I did not share it with anyone for the longest time my not my close family not my close friends no one mm-hmm. so uh but deep down i knew that if i don't do something to counter it i will i will you know go down the drain my mind so meditation and pranayama breathing is what i will say kept me going throughout this five years and the, there were days which were worse so that time even if i couldn't really meditate i used to force myself to sit and be still and calm myself down and all this helped me to not go into depression hmm. and um, yes for me honestly speaking kirsten the strongest thing i can advise anyone is to make meditation a part of their daily routine and pranayam like in india pranayam is like a combination yoga pranayam and meditation so that's what and uh, what happens is since i had learned it earlier so and i've been doing it for a long time so what happens is um it is very difficult to change your emotion so if you are angry and i say oh hey calm down chances are i'll aggravate you further at that moment mm mm-hmm. mhm but uh do you know every emotion has a certain breath pattern mm. you can always force yourself to change your breath if you know but it is very difficult if you're hurt or you're panicking or angry to just change your emotion like that you can't but if you know the breathing pattern then it will still not be easy but after a certain time if you start doing it it does have a very positive impact and you are then somehow in control of your emotions that's amazing so is that part of what you teach people uh yes it is a part of what i share with uh, people and um, because it's a very uh, realistic tool it's a very ancient tool more than 5000 years uh and anything which survives for such a long time has to have something going for it and it is very uh you know you can see a change almost immediately that's amazing i love that you grew up with with meditation I, you know here in the united states people definitely meditate but that is not the norm and it's definitely i think it's gaining in popularity too um so it's certainly something that people do and they practice but I love that your whole family is involved and that you just grew up with it. So, um so tell me um yeah, so how I know with your speaking it sounds like but 
what methods do you use to help make your impact? And then I want to hear too, what is the specific impact that you're working to make? All right. So um, I'll be very honest with you. When I started talking about it, I did not have a clear cut strategy. The only thing which was there in my mind all the time was what if I had died that night? I have got a second chance and I have to make it count mm -hmm. and I have to make a difference. And it was like a mantra, a chant, which just refused to die down. And I started talking about it. So, um, so to get back to your question, at that time, I was not really thinking if I make an impact, will people even listen to it or connect? Because this topic is actually a topic which makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. The statistics are one, like one in three women are, uh, you know, are, uh, are sexually or physically abused by their male intimate partners. And the numbers are also pretty high for men. Mm -hmm. So when I talk, you know, I am very clear about one thing. My message is not anti-men or pro-women. It is anti-violence, anti-domestic violence. Uh, so I just wanted to talk about it, uh, but uh, I didn't think it through, honestly. And I got lucky and I got a chance to speak. My first keynote actually was like where I addressed 500 students like um, I think in US maybe there'll be high school because they'll be like somewhere in the range of 16 plus mm -hmm. yeah so um, from 38 uh, schools and uh, principals from all these schools and I was invited to talk about uh, domestic violence and it has a very deep impact not only on the person who's going through it but on the family of that person including the children and uh, and I spoke and the reaction I got was the first time I realized how important it is for me to share my story. Before that, I just had this thing. I have to do my bit. And uh, I was actually scared also somewhere that I don't know how it will be received. Mm -hmm. But like people had tears in their eyes and there were so many questions and there's so many people who, you know, told me that they are going through something similar or someone they know is going through something similar. And just by sharing my story, I gave them hope. And uh, and I, you know, I made it easy. I'm actually quoting someone. This lady said, uh, thank you, ma'am, for sharing your story. By sharing your story, you make me feel safe enough to share my story. Mm. Yeah, I love that. You give others the gift to also speaking up. Yes, but uh, I had not thought all this. I just wanted to talk about it because, mm -hmm. uh, because um, you know, there's this, I love Martin Luther King and there's this quote of his. Um, I may, you know, miss a word here or there, but I love it. Mm -hmm. He said somewhere that, you know, our life begins to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Mm. Mm -hmm. and it resonated with me and I needed to talk yeah now when you first started speaking did you ever ever have any fear of him no not really because uh, actually uh, um, I was uh, back in India and uh, my whole family uh, was very, very supportive. I had not shared this with my family. Can you believe it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I when I know, came, yeah. yeah. So when I came back to India and I shared with them, like, uh, then, like, the support, I was just, I was like, why didn't I share it sooner? Mm, I love it. Yeah, and that was probably the end of your shame, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. I was like so ashamed because see, um, we all have a perception about us, is right? We like mm -hmm. to create a certain image, and we also have a certain image about ourselves, whether mm -hmm. we realize it or not. Yeah. And uh, I'm like an M I'm an MBA. I have ten years of experience in HR, 
that too at a middle management level like in my last role i was heading talent management for an mnc uh i had like a team of 10 people reporting into me right and mm-hmm. uh, i so you know you you believe that you are a certain kind of a person you are very mm-hmm. confident uh, you are well educated and uh, you come from a decent family background and you assume that something like this will never happen to you mm-hmm. so when it happened to me i was just so embarrassed i was mm-hmm. like how can this be happening to me and and i took it Mhm. So, yeah, talking about it helped. Uh, I love it. So you're helping yourself heal while you're helping others. And I'm laughing because when we first started talking, you know, before we started the interview, I said I think we have some things in common and I also have a background in human resources with a master's degree. <laughs> Oh my god. And uh and it was the same in in um I honestly have done some speaking as well um as a survivor and Uh yeah and the and one of the reasons that they wanted me to speak was I was the myth busting speaker because people have this uh idea in their head about what someone who would be in a relationship you know like yes. this would be like and I was not that and neither are most people who are but um yes. yeah yes. there aren't there aren't safeguards to say that this will never happen but when we're in silence that perception can continue. And so I'm so grateful that you're working to bust that stigma. Yes, I'm doing my little bit as <laughs> who are and uh, and isn't it sad that actually the statistics are so true? I'm sure you've talked to many other people who have gone through something similar. Mhm. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so um So you speak and then what are there other services that you provide talk about your coaching a little bit Okay so I I actually um it uh, I'm a passive coach I'll just explain it in a moment <laughs> So what happened was when I started talking I had not uh, I was in a very different frame of mind even when I started talking I was still in the relationship like I had filed for divorce but then it was in the process so it was very uh, raw very traumatic and very new right so while I'm I'm talking I'm also healing myself like you said mm-hmm. so I had not really given it a thought where my life will go I just had this thing that if I'm doing something which helps even one person my life has some value but funnily enough people started connecting with me via facebook messenger or instagram or linkedin and then they started sharing you know um, and surprisingly like uh, it was not just women it were men also mm. and they started sharing like uh, you would think like maybe they just reach out to me for some uh, relationship issue but no a lot of them connected with me because they were facing a lot of anxiety during their you know in their job mm-hmm. or uh, a certain gentleman reached out because uh, even though he is doing very well because he's on linkedin so i had his profile but uh, he felt that his parents still didn't consider him a success so these are the kind of things which people started reaching out to me for mm. interesting uh, Yes and uh, so whatever i could share with the combination of my own life experience and uh, the hr experience which i carry and pranayam and meditation it kind of helped them yeah um, sounds like a nice combination so how do you offer the coaching how are you actually Honestly if you see I still do not have a website but it is getting made because so many people have asked me to get that done mm-hmm. so what happens is um when people connect with me via any social media I share whatever you know uh, like whatever I'll charge for my sessions mm-hmm. and I do it via zoom okay and uh, uh, and uh, like uh, and then obviously you would understand that nothing can be solved in one session it takes time because anything you connect with 
and you need a solution for will take time. It takes a moment for something to go totally wrong, but it takes a longer time for things to get back to normal. And my uh, my firm belief is that the transformation, the real change happens from within. Whether it is work, whether it's a personal problem, it could be anything business related. But then how you deal with it is what is going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, you know, like uh, people sometimes think that, okay, so, uh, you know, this is hocus pocus. But honestly speaking, if someone connects with me that they are not getting a promotion. Now, this is a very hardcore work related uh, issue. But then they have to actually work on themselves and see where is the problem, what all do, can they do, what is within their scope mm-hmm. and what lies beyond their you know, control. And all that only happens when the other person is willing to work and willing to do the necessary things and change. Right. So it is always, you know, the way out is in. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you how the number of times that I've, said to someone, and this is so simple and so silly, but it's like, there is no change without actual change. (laughs) So if you want to engage in coaching, you need to change for there to be something changed. (laughs) So tell me, what has been your biggest internal or external challenge that you've had to overcome in making your impact? And how did you overcome it? Hmm. Okay, so internal um again uh this is something i didn't realize so there's this lady i was um, talking to and finally and she was like talking to me for the first time and finally she was like she almost was curt to me and she said ruchi can you stop stop underestimating yourself mm. and and i was so startled and i realized that yes this is um, this is something I tend to do sometimes even now that sometimes I I I think okay if I do this will it really help the other person mm-hmm. is it powerful enough good enough but then but then you know like uh, these uh, moments are there but it's become it's like I'm getting more confident about this fact that if we share something from our heart. And share uh, with complete honesty what we can do and what we cannot do. It will help the other person out. So, yes, that has been my biggest internal um, challenge. Great. Believing that I can actually help the other person. (laughs) (laughs) Great. And how do you stay motivated during tough times? Okay, so I'll be honest with you. There are days when I cry. Okay. All right. So uh, if anyone tells anyone that they are upbeat all the time, Mm. then I'll have to see what they are having. (laughs) Because nobody can be upbeat all the time. Right? We are human beings and we have our emotions. So there are days when, like, when I say I cry, I don't mean I sit and cry for days at end. No, but I cry. But most of the time... um, There are two, three things which I do. One is my go-to thing is meditation and pranayama. Mm -hmm. That always picks me and puts me in a better place emotionally. And uh, to anyone who's listening to me, this is something which is a long term, uh, like it is sustainable. What happens is sometimes we pick up the phone and we talk to a friend and we feel very happy and it is good. But have you noticed the moment you keep down the phone, say after five minutes, 10 minutes, you're again back in that zone. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but if someone does meditation and now Harvard, there's a research uh, done by the Harvard uh, professors that it actually changed the structure of your brain. If you do meditation just for, I think, 15 or 20 minutes, I don't remember the exact uh, statistics around it like 15 to 20 minutes daily for just eight weeks, it actually 
changes the structure of your brain it enhances your uh, emotional staying power um so now there's science behind it mm. and i can personally vouch for it well i love that i you're getting me back motivated <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, I was on a kick for a period. I was one of those people. I was on a kick, and I think I was doing well with it. And then it got away from me. Um, and it's been a few months, so you're getting me definitely giving me that motivation to hop back on that. Um, yes, definitely yes, need to build that. it back in. So tell me, what words of wisdom do you have for others who want to make who want to make their impact in the world? One is be very honest. because um people you can you know uh, fool some i have read this somewhere like you can fool some people sometime but mm-hmm. like you cannot fool everyone all the time right so people can actually make out if you are being phony yeah so first be honest about whatever you are as a person and whatever your issue is um So when I talk about my own issue I just talk about it and it connects with people because you know it's not the words it's the emotion it's the like when we were talking you you shared certain things and we connected because you know you could understand what I went through mm-hmm. and a lot of people may not have gone through something like this but they have their own challenges so the first thing is to be honest in your intention to help people and be very simple about your message don't no need to use these big words that i'm a inner tiger let's awaken the inner tiger <laughs> you know some ninja doesn't really work does it like uh, right. be simple about your message and be very uh, clear about what things have worked for you and if it hasn't worked then don't uh, ever sell something or uh, share something which has not worked for you just because it is the in thing because uh, if you're in it for the long haul and you really want to impact people then you have to be very you have to come from a place of integrity right i love that yep um well i have so enjoyed hearing well i shouldn't say i enjoyed hearing your story it was tough to hear but i no. love hearing your story of triumph and um how you have overcome and are making such an impact for so many uh out of the horrendous circumstance that you were in and i love your message also of being yourself and being true um and your story is such a testament to that because yeah. it sounds like you just simply shared and you know like you said people are drawn in and you're you connect emotionally and i think the message is beyond just being you but the other the kind of underlying message that i get there is accept yourself too um and so in accepting yourself then you can be real and yeah. i know what an uphill battle that can be when you've been in an abusive relationship when you've been torn down to your core it is a bit you know it's tough anyway sometimes to embrace ourselves but um yes. but you came out of that relationship and it sounds like just you know have been able to overcome all of that the beat down the tear down um to embrace and appreciate you and then use that connect to connect authentically with others and so um you're amazing <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much you are amazing too you know oh. and i'm not saying it for the effect but yes you are you get oh. what you're doing with your life oh well thank you i mean that is what it's all about ultimately isn't it it's it is making an impact on others and uh Boy, there's no better feeling than turning those tragedies, those trials into triumphs. And uh I will never forget the the day that I was first driving to go share my story and I was shaking in my boots. But I <laughs> also felt that um switch the little switch flip. Yes. And uh and good was going to come from it and it you know, it was it felt really good. So um so I want so anyone who's listening and would like 
to connect with Ruchi, uh, go to defeatthedrama.com, click on the podcast tab, and then go to today's show notes. This is episode number 145, and you'll be able to connect with her. There will be uh, links to her Twitter, her Instagram, her LinkedIn, uh, all kinds of links <laughs> to all her social media <laughs> so that you won't have any problem connecting with her. So uh, any parting words before we leave for today? Okay, one thing is um, I'm actually writing a book now. Oh, great. So just wanted to share it uh, with uh, you and uh, or everyone who's listening to this. So yes, uh, when it's ready, I'll let the world know. But I'm very happy about it. And uh, any message is, um, okay, Um, one is this, when I say I own my life and I help others to own theirs, it is very critical that all of us take ownership. When I say ownership, I mean responsibility for our own life. Because the day we take ownership of our life is the day we move from a place of weakness to a position of strength. And believe me, the life starts changing from that moment. And another one is, you know, take the power back. It is your life and your story. So don't give the pen to anyone else to author it. You have got to write it. Good, bad and ugly. Mm, Love it. I love it. And now you literally are taking your pen and writing it. And I'm going to assume, is this about (laughs) your story and your triumph? Is that what the book is going to be about? Yes, so this story, like, I'm not making it an autobiography, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. this is a story about a girl who overcomes her fears Mm -hmm. and moves to a place of empowerment. And there I share actually the journey, uh, which most of us go through, right? Like uh, that uh, phase of denial, then uh, Mm -hmm. anger, then finally accepting it and uh, then doing whatever needs to be done and forgiveness things like that and I'm connecting it with little little stories Um, so yeah (laughs) nice nice any title for it or not yet not yet I have a title in my mind but mm, yeah you don't want to share it yet (laughs) no I totally get it you know (laughs) I get it well so thank you again so much for being with me today and uh, please everyone go uh, connect with her by going to defeatthedrama.com for or uh, click on the podcast tab and then go to episode 145. And um, if if you are struggling to make your impact, also connect with me there as well. So everyone get out there and have an awesome day and get out there and make your own impact. Until next time. Bye. Bye.